On such an important topic to focus on today. Now, today we are spending some time commemorating the important uh, and momentous day that is World AIDS Day. A time to reflect on how far we have come in the battle of fighting this illness and all of its stigmas as well. And a chance to really look to the future in terms of developments of uh, finding a vaccine or, and a cure as well. So joining us next on a Feel Good Breakfast show to unpack this is the director of the HIV Prevention Research Unit of the Medical Research Council, uh, Dr. Geeta Ramji, and also the president of the International AIDS Society, Professor Linda Gale Backer. Good morning and welcome to your Feel Good Breakfast show. I love the fact that we're focusing on this because it really is such a huge issue, not only in South Africa, but globally as well. Um, Professor Linda, I want to ask you this. I mean, what, what is the current rate of new infections in South Africa? And also, I mean, how do these infections occur? So we, we, we saw the increase in infections from about 1990, and that has been steady. The good news is... Um, you know, the, the numbers seem to be plateauing out. Largely that's because treatment is keeping people alive. But we're still seeing in this country about mm. 400,000 infections per year. Um, and that, if you do your math, works out at just over 1,000 a day. So extraordinary numbers of new infections. Yeah. And, it, and it means we're actually having more infections every day than what we are getting onto treatment. And that is not good news. So it really does behove us as, as a mm. country to say, how do we stop those infections? And the main way in this country that people get infected is actually sexually. Yeah. Um, so young women uh, being infected by um, men, uh, men being infected by women uh, via sexual means. Mm -hmm. And so again, this is where our attention needs to go. Clearly there are other key populations, particularly vulnerable. Um, and again, government has some very uh, specific yeah. programs for them. But um, the, the, the main attention on young women and young men who are infected via sex. Let's quickly take a caller. We have a caller on the line, Anonymous from the Northwest, who just want to share something. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, my dear. What is your, your question or your comment this morning? Um, my comment is, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, in our area, it's not much as, uh, you know, uh, uh, people don't want to disclose. It's about the stigma because, you know, I used to work for my boss and this boss of mine immigrated to America. So I disclosed to him and he, he took it okay and he, he counseled me and he said I must go to the hospital for more counseling and treatment. So then and he, he recommended me to somebody else to work for that person. And then I thought I must be honest with this person and also disclose to this person. And to my amazement, that person was a medical practitioner. But as soon as he heard that I was HIV positive, he, he, sh he just shut me out. You know, I was so dismayed and I was very disappointed because I thought maybe because he is a medical practitioner, he'll accept me as I, as I was and I'll get even more help. That's why most people don't disclose because mm. they are afraid of losing their jobs. Yeah. I, I, was, I found out that I was HIV positive in 2001 after my father's death. And I, I'm a single parent. I had to provide for my children. But at first, I didn't know what was wrong with me because I was always weak. And I thought maybe I had diabetes. So mm. I just went to, for a checkup and, and they told me that I was HIV positive, which I couldn't believe mm. because I didn't know where I got it. But my, my last baby, uh, you know, was okay. And I didn't, yeah. I wasn't, you know, tested. Yeah. And I didn't have any other relationships. And since then, I don't have any relationship. But all I can say now that um, my viral load is undetectable, and mm. I'm still on the on the treatment. Mm. At first, I used to take three tabs at the day, uh, at a day, but now it's only one. And since I took the one, I've lost so much weight. You know, I'm yeah. so thin. You know, I went from 60 to 30 kg, which really yeah. alarmed me. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, 
um, we must be taught about these things. And I, I said to the doctor, hey, hey, doctor, why am I losing? Why is the street med, uh, draining yeah. the fat out of my muscles yeah. and whatnot? And the doctor said, hey, you must be happy that you you so thin because most people are fat and they, <laughs> and then they want to, to be as thin as you yeah. and whatnot. But I'm, I'm still worried. Yeah. But up to now, I'm taking supplements. My children are buying supplements yeah. for me. Thank you. Listen, thank you very much. I'm going to have to cut you off there. Thank you. You can obviously feel that there's a lot of emotion behind this, mm -hmm. and this is what a lot of people are dealing with. Um, Dr. Gita, just once, I mean, is this what you are finding? You know, when, when people come out with their status, you know, there's almost like, a you know, people take a step back, and, and, and this I is why so. we need to talk about this. Yeah, I think we need to, again, although there's a lot of education that's mm -hmm. going around, make people understand that people with HIV positive, they're not contagious, yeah. they're not going to do anything. They're on treatment, their viral load is uh, well below transmission, and they need to understand that these are normal people and we need to take care of them. So yeah. I think the problem is that people do not understand, understand. the transmission of HIV. Yeah. So in this particular case, you had a, a medical practitioner who she was working for who did not accept her. Now it makes, it, me think exactly, do, does everybody know how transmission exactly. occurs? And this is exactly why we need to talk about this and break those stigmas around sure. HIV and AIDS. Um, thank you very much. We are going to be back with you guys in just a little bit and also continue on this topic. So make sure to continue watching Expresso uh, this morning because later we'll, we will be talking about the advancements in HIV and AIDS research with Dr. Ramji and also Professor Becker. And if you have any questions you would like to direct to them, please give us a shout on 83 or post uh, on our social media sites as well. We're going to be taking a quick break. We'll be right back. Oh, you can